Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, some background comments. I understand that the middleweight fight between Dmitry Pirog and Daniel Gill has fallen apart. Apparently, Gill is going to fight Felix Sturm next. You know, that's a big disappointment. Uh, simply because those two guys, Pirog and Gill, are fighters you need to know. They are very talented. I believe Pirog is one of the best pound for pound in the sport. Both guys have shares of the middleweight championship and they're relatively unknown, right? You need to know them, especially since there's going to be consolidation in the middleweight division after Chavez Jr. fights Andy Lee and the winner fights Sergio Martinez, right? In that consolidation, don't lose perspective, don't lose sight of the fact that Pirog and Gil are excellent fighters. That fight was a fight on my radar. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen, and I think all of us lost as a result of that. Speaking of underrated fighters, the heavyweight division is soon going to have upheaval, right? Vitaly Klitschko would rather spend his mid to late 40s in politics and being a statesman than in the ring being heavyweight champion of the world. So he has announced that he's only going to fight a couple more fights. And there are certain names out there that mean more to him than others, right? He seems to have some on-again, off-again feud with David Hay. I think that'd be a big fight. Uh, many in boxing feel that the best round fought against Vitaly Klitschko recently was by Adlener Solis, a very distinguished amateur. I believe Vitaly knows that Adlener Solis is uh, real competition. And um, I would not be surprised. If Vitaly Klitschko tries to, in his last two fights, fight guys who he has no problem getting motivated to prepare against, right? The press is trying to tell us that fighters like unbeaten Seth Mitchell and Kubrat Pulev are the real deal, right? You're hearing these guys pushed by media outlets as fighters who might be next in line to do something special, right? There are many in the UK who feel that Derek Chisora, who has already gone the distance with Vitaly Klitschko and who clearly beat Robert Hellenius, even though the judges saw otherwise, should be in the mix and Chisora himself can put himself in the mix if he's able to do something dramatic against David Hay, right? Well, on my list, and we all have a very short list of guys in every division who we feel are viable, right? On my short list, the real heavyweight competition is very short. There's Adlener Solis, who I mentioned earlier. I'm one of those who believes that Tony Thompson, Vladimir Klitschko's next opponent, who... Klitschko beat earlier, but Thompson had a knee that required surgery after the match. And if you look at the CompuBox numbers, you'll see that Thompson actually put up one of the more spirited oppositions against Vladimir Klitschko. I believe Tony Thompson belongs on the short list. Right now, not in the future, but right now, I have no idea how a fighter can have David Price's power. David Price's accuracy, David Price's jab, and not be on the short list. I've heard from many people who believe that he should keep fighting stiffs for the foreseeable future. All I can say is both Klitschko's are 35 and up, right? And um, what fighters need to do is to realize that there are very few fighters against whom you can build a legacy. If you fight and beat a Klitschko, You'll have a legacy. You'll have credibility, right? My point is simply, uh, if you have the skills today, and if there are dominant champs, known champs in your division today, then what are you waiting for? Of course, I'm also one of those people who believes, style-wise, 
skill-wise, that southpaw, Antonio Tarver, right now, would give both Klitschko's stronger fights than they've had of late, right? And, of course, I believe because, in my opinion, Vladimir Klitschko cannot fight inside. Inside, what Vlad does is he grabs you, he tries to lean on you. What he doesn't do is get low and work your body and throw flurries and put a forearm on your chest. Because I believe Vladimir Klitschko would have a problem inside. I believe Evander Holifield, yes, the senior citizen, style-wise, would give Evander, excuse me, would give Vladimir Klitschko a problem. And of course, finally, although I would not bet on this guy because of a host of reasons, uneven performances, etc. The talent is undeniable, in my opinion. I believe Tyson Fury belongs on the short list of viable guys to take over the heavyweight division. He has the height, he has the jab. The question, he can switch from southpaw to orthodox and back. The question really is whether his mental state is there and whether his conditioning, quite frankly, is there. That's an open question. Well, let me add a name you might not have heard to, uh, heard about to this very short list of guys who, in my opinion, are credible at heavyweight. In other words, these are the few guys who, quite frankly, in my opinion, you know, have a real shot at um, winning the heavyweight title. I'm not saying they necessarily beat the Klitschkos. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is they would be the best opposition to the Klitschkos. And to this short list that I've just laid out, let me name another guy. His name is Luis Ortiz. He is a Cuban heavyweight. He is 6'4", he's flown under the radar, he is a southpaw, he's a big man, he weighs between 235 and 240. He's unbeaten right now, although he hasn't fought top-notch competition in the pros. Understand that this guy was one of Cuba's best fighters, he is the 2005 amateur heavyweight champion. He has been in the ring with guys like Felix Savon. The talent is obvious. He's more of a skill guy than an athlete, but the skills are top notch. He reminds me of Riddick Bow. Not quite as fluid as Bow. Bow's an outlier, but still awfully fluid. He has a nice long right jab, right? The fact that he's a southpaw will give guys fits. He is committed to body shots, and he knows how to literally lean in, throw devastating hooks to the body, and he's two-handed. So as opposed to Razor Ruddick against Lennox Lewis, and if you look at that film, you'll see that because Ruddick is one-handed, when Ruddick throws a punch to Lewis's body, Lewis was able to sit on it, knowing that if Ruddick threw his left hand to the body, he had nothing protecting himself. Lewis was able to take out Ruddick in two rounds, right? With this guy, you can't do it because this guy is two-handed. So even if he leans forward and throws a right hand to your body, if you then try to hit him, he's skilled enough to roll with the punches and to come back with his dominant hand, which is his left. He's also mentally strong. There is a video online. I've placed it on my channel page. I encourage fans of the heavyweight division to look at this video. It's him against Epifano Mendoza. And what you're going to see is somewhere in the middle of this fight, about the fourth round, Mendoza fully understands, in fact, I'm sure he understood it from the first round, that he's in with a superior talent. So he then tries a bunch of veteran tricks. 
you know, holding on to the guy's arm, hitting him low. Um, at one point, he even grabs Ortiz's leg and Ortiz's knee hits the canvas. Mendoza tries a bunch of veteran tricks to throw the guy off his game. And Ortiz, who is 33 years old, keeps his head, never panics, doesn't complain, right? He views himself as the alpha dog, right? He stayed calm. Mendoza ultimately gets disqualified for yet another low blow. In other words, you're talking about a very mature guy in the ring, right, who doesn't lose his head, who's highly skilled, doesn't rely on athleticism, right, and he's methodical. What's not to like? I believe he loses to both Klitschko's, simply because, as YouTube Nation clearly reminded me after Carl Frotch's victory over Lucien Butte, one of the ways to beat a southpaw is with a straight right hand. Right, and my point is simply, both Klitschko's throw excellent straight right hands. Ortiz, while he has some athleticism, I don't consider him to be a great athlete. One of the secrets with the Klitschko brothers is as big as their punches are, both of them move well, right? It's obvious that Vladimir Klitschko moves well. If you wanna see Vitaly move well, Take a look at his fight against Derek Chisora, understanding that he couldn't throw his jab because he hurt his shoulder. And what you'll see is he fights stretches of that fight on his back foot. And he's able to do it against Chisora, who is a freight train coming forward. Right? My point is simply this. While I believe Ortiz is serious competition, I believe that the Klitschko brothers would be able to force him to move around the ring, that's not his strength. Like Riddick Bowe, he's a deconstructionist who can break you down from in close. Fighters who have the feet spaced right, who can move around the ring, and who can quickly deliver a straight right hand, not just the Klitschko's, but David Hay, right? Mobile heavyweights with quick hands and great straight rights. I believe would give Ortiz a problem. Also understand too that Ortiz in the pros has been mowing guys down. Most of his wins have been by KO. I believe his knockout ratio as I make this video is over 70%. Right? Anytime you see a guy who rarely goes the distance in fights, right? And he doesn't look like Vladimir Klitschko body-wise. In other words, when you look at his body, even though he has the broad back and he has muscles, right? He has body fat, right? He's, he's not, you know, uh, completely athletic looking like David Hay or Vladimir Klitschko. And when you see a guy who commits to his punches, like Ortiz does, right? He's putting a lot of energy into his punches. He's trying to take you out that always creates an open question of how his stamina would be in the later rounds against quality competition in hard fought matches, right? He's one of the most talented heavyweights out there, I believe, and let's criticize the press, I believe he's better than Seth Mitchell, Kubrat Pulev, and Derek Chisora. Right, certainly he has, in my opinion, more talent than all of them. Here in the United States, we're so desperate for a quality heavyweight that we're pubbing guys like Chris Ariola. Right, well, this guy, after defecting from Cuba, and understand he won the bronze in the Amateurs World Championship in 2003, he won the gold in 2005. This is a decorated Cuban fighter, right? He fights out of Florida now in the United States if he ever fights Seth Mitchell. I'm taking Luis Ortiz. Dare I say this guy might be 
the best heavyweight fighting out of the United States right now. He's big time quality fighter. I hope you give him a look. They're talking about him fighting, um, I believe it's Alexander Ustinov. I believe that would be a bad matchup for him. Very bad matchup. Simply because Ustinov is quick on his feet. He moves. And he has a right hand. He can throw a straight right hand when he wants to. Now, while I don't consider Ustinov to have the full set of skills that Ortiz has, I believe that that movement with the straight right hand, right, the ability to force Ortiz to move off the spot is the key to beating Ortiz. And I believe Ustinov has that key. So I believe that fight is a bad fight for him. I would encourage the Ortiz people to really think about demanding fights against the Seth Mitchells, the Pulevs, the Derek Chisoras of the world. That would put him on the map awfully fast. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And uh, Luis is spelled L-U-I-S. Ortiz is O-R-T-I-Z. What I like with the guy is he's an unapologetic big man. He comes in the ring. He has swag. More importantly, he throws combinations. He has a great jab. He's willing to bank shots to the body. And when he comes upstairs, he has the power. Plus, he's a southpaw. This guy's a nightmarish matchup for anybody in the division. And don't be fooled by the fact that he has less than 20 professional fights. The guy has more than 300 amateur fights. He was known in amateur circles. This guy belongs in your short list with Solis, Tony Thompson, David Price, Antonio Tarver, Evander Holifield, Tyson Fury, uh, Fury of elite heavyweights, right? Note that I did not place Seth Mitchell, Kubrat Pulev, Derek Chisora on my list. Let me add another name to the list of elite heavyweights, David Hay. Um, I should have had him there the first time around. Thanks for watching.